Audiophiles have a lot of strong opinions when it comes to measurements and whether or not they matter, especially as it relates to loudspeakers, their specs, and frequency response. On the one hand, you have a group of people that believe that a speaker's laboratory measurements are the only real measure of whether or not a loudspeaker is good or garbage. And on the other hand, an entirely different group of people that believe that measurements matter little because none of us listen in a laboratory. So, who's right? To better answer the question about whether or not measurements matter, let's look at a frequency response graph. For those of you that may not be aware, a frequency response graph plots a loudspeaker's ability to play back certain frequencies or tones from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So the more you move left on the graph towards 20 hertz, the more you're talking about bass. The more you move to the right towards 20 kilohertz, the more you're talking about high frequencies or treble. Obviously, anything in the middle is your mid-range, which is where the bulk of the human voice lies. Now, I know there are graphs out there that go beyond 20 to 20, but we're gonna keep things simple today and stick with just the 20 to 20 graph for now. If you have read or watched a lot of reviews, you no doubt have heard speakers described as neutral, bright, bass heavy, or punchy. But what does that mean? Well, a neutral speaker is going to have a pretty flat frequency response curve, meaning it's going to rise up from about, say, 20 hertz towards that zero axis, follow that zero axis across the graph, rolling off at around 20 kilohertz. That is more or less a neutral frequency response. And what that means is that the loudspeaker, at least in a laboratory setting, is not putting any extra energy or emphasis on any one part of its frequency performance. Now, a bright speaker is going to have a noticeable rise off to the right side of the graph. Remember, the right side is where the high frequencies lie. So you're going to see a noticeable rise off to the right. A bass-heavy speaker, you're going to see a noticeable rise off to the left, where the bass frequencies are found. And, well, a punchy loudspeaker is going to have a rise off to the left and off to the right, coming more or less towards zero in the mid-range. This is known as a smile-like curve. Pretty simple and helpful, right? Well, yes and no, because not every speaker manufacturer measures their loudspeakers in exactly the same way, nor does every manufacturer have access to exactly the same facilities. For example, Harman, the parent company of JBL and Revel, they have an anechoic chamber that they use to measure their loudspeakers and aid in their designs, whereas Tecton loudspeakers, well, they don't have an anechoic chamber. And this isn't a knock against Tecton, as they are far from the only manufacturer without access to said chamber. But you can start to see how it's not really a level or at least consistent playing field. And then you have brands like Klipsch that choose to measure their speakers in a more real world or in room environment, potentially giving their customers an entirely different view of their speaker's performance. And these variables only add to the debate over whether or not measurements matter. But they all have one thing in common. They all fail to take into consideration two very, very large variables. You and your room. Obviously, the biggest variable in this equation is you. Your personal tastes are going to dictate whether or not you think something sounds good or bad. But your room comes in at a close second, as it's going to have the greatest influence over your loudspeaker's sound and whether or not you think it is good or bad. Here's where the importance of measurements start to go out the window. A perfectly neutral loudspeaker can be made to sound bright if your room is enhancing, well, the high frequencies. For example, if you have wood floors, concrete floors, a lot of bare walls, or maybe just a ton of windows, these are all things that can make a room sound bright, thus influencing the neutrality of your loudspeaker. And your room can even make a neutral speaker sound more bass heavy or rich because of the materials found inside. For example, if you have heavy carpets, a lot of rugs, uh, plush furniture, a lot of bookcases, and maybe not a lot of windows and low ceilings, these are all things that can contribute to your loudspeaker, which was neutral, now sounding a bit lifeless or dull or more 
space heavy. This is why properly treated acoustic rooms try and strike a balance between soft and hard surfaces so that you come away with a neutral sounding room. Now, if you understand your room, for example, you know your room is bright, then maybe you should shop for a loudspeaker that's a little bit more neutral or darker, as that's gonna be a pretty good fit for your room potentially. But if your room is acoustically dead because you still believe in owning shag carpet or living among your floor to ceiling record collection, then maybe you're a candidate for a brighter speaker as that may be a better fit for your room. The problem with this is, is that we often don't have rooms with just one sonic characteristic. Take my room for example. It is an open concept and as a result, the high frequency response can vary quite dramatically depending on where you choose to sit or stand. Where I choose to sit and listen and review products, the high frequencies are actually pretty tame, but where I sit and record this portion of our videos, it's not, which is why I have to treat this part of the room before recording. And the same is true of bass. There are parts of my room where there is a noticeable bump in bass energy. That is to say that my room is supercharging a loudspeaker's bass response. But then there's other areas in my room where it's just sucking the life right out of a loudspeaker's bass response. I have mapped virtually every corner of this room acoustically and I know what what works well and where. So when I sit down to review a product, I have a pretty good understanding of what my room is doing versus what the product or loudspeaker is doing on its own. But if I'm ever not sure, well, I just go in the back, I grab all of my acoustic treatments, drag them out here and do my best to take the room out of the equation. But no matter what, short of listening in a laboratory or a controlled setting, you're not always hearing the speaker or the speaker's supposed measurements. You're hearing the room's influence on a loudspeaker and whether or not the two are working together or against one another. And if you're skeptical about a manufacturer's frequency response or maybe because you yourself have measured a loudspeaker or you've gone online and found someone who has and you, you're seeing discrepancies, I mean, unless you can completely recreate the parameters down to the tools and methods used to measure the speaker in that environment, you have to understand there's going to be some, some differences because there's just too many variables to have to contend with. And all of this brings us back to you. There are two ways you determine whether or not measurements matter. The first has to do with bias and the second has to do with just how good your hearing is. If you're a person that has put a lot of stock in measurements or you believe that a manufacturer is somehow superior based on their measurements, well then guess what? You're probably gonna think measurements matter quite a bit. But if you're a person that says to hell with measurements and all audiophile BS is exactly that, it's BS, well then you too have an inherent bias and can be influenced into hearing things that aren't necessarily true or quantifiable. But all of this matters very little if you can't hear certain frequencies to begin with. So before sitting down to write this video, I took three separate online hearing tests. I know these aren't professionally administered tests, but they're still a pretty good barometer for where you might be at. I am 39 years old, and according to these three tests, I have no real hearing loss, and my high frequency hearing tops out at around 19 kilohertz. It's possible that my headphones had a difficult time reproducing 20 kilohertz, but it's also possible that I just can't hear that particular frequency that well. Needless to say, I think I'm doing pretty good with respect to hearing, but Christy took the test and her high frequency hearing falls somewhere between 15 and 16 kilohertz, which is still pretty good, but helps explain why her and I don't always see eye to eye with respect to a loudspeaker being bright versus neutral. For example, I will often say, hey, this, this speaker sounds bright, whereas she will disagree, saying that it's just right. How is it possible for two people sitting in the same room at the same time listening to the same speaker having two completely different reactions to a loudspeaker's reported frequency response? Well, the simplest answer is often the right one, and that is she simply cannot hear it. And so all of those frequencies that inform us that this is a bright speaker matter not to her because she can't hear them and they don't have any impact on her ability to enjoy that loudspeaker because now a bright speaker has suddenly become more neutral. 
And all of these factors matter. Factors like the frequency response, your room, your personal bias, and whether or not you just have hearing loss. It all plays a role. But this also explains how it's possible to watch or read a review of, say, a speaker from multiple sources and come away with multiple verdicts. This is why measurements like reviews are just meant to be guides to help you whittle down your choices to a reasonable amount so that hopefully you can go out and audition speakers for yourself. And this is why I close every video the same way. The only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Because there is no specification or measurement for what it is you are going to enjoy. So. Do measurements ultimately matter? Well, for me, not really. Because if I don't enjoy myself, all of those fancy numbers and measurements add up to a whole lot of nothing. But that's just me. That's how I feel. What do you think? Do you think measurements matter? No, they don't matter to me. Prior to meeting you, they didn't matter. I just listened to music. Mm -hmm. And I could decide whether or not I liked the sound of something, something without knowing anything about the measurements. Now, you know, three, four years later, and I really do feel like I have a far better education as, you know, as it relates to sound and speakers. And, and while I have a better knowledge of measurements, they still don't really matter to me. I think it's, it's just not important, you know, whether or not something has a specific frequency response. Uh, it, I could not care less about it. There are, those are not the things that I focus on. Mm -hmm. And I think it's funny when I, when we see people that get so wrapped up in measurements and what does a brand specifically say about their measurements and what some compared to what somebody else on the internet says, I mean, Half the time, you can tell that they haven't actually sat down and listened to that particular product. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, how could you possibly be able to form an opinion when you, you yourself haven't heard it? Well, yeah. I mean, that's kind of, I mean, Harmon does listen to all of their products, but that's one of their, that's kind of their, um, their claim to fame is that they let science dictate not the subjective ear. So that's like what Harmon does. You know, everything is very much like it measures this way. It's as close to flat as we can get. Therefore, that makes for a good speaker. But then you've got companies like Meridian that just publicly came out on Instagram saying that we measure everything, but then ultimately we'll throw those measurements right out the window based on someone's perceived bias because we would rather you be happy with what you're hearing versus us trying to convince you that what you're hearing is technically perfect. Right. Well, and what's funny is like Harmon, which is also JBL, you know, they historically for me are not my favorite speakers. Right. So good on them, I guess, that they have walked <laughs> away with some great, you know, perfectly measured speaker. But if I don't think they're fun to listen to. Yeah that does really nothing for me. Yeah. So again, you have to decide for yourself. So. And what's, what's really funny too is personal bias can have, can, can kind of change too with the wind a little bit. Like I typically don't like neutral speakers. I'm with you. I kind of go, I can appreciate it, you know, but I, I'm, I'm like, is it going to pick up anytime soon? Is something going to happen? It's a little bit too even keel for me. But then, like, Klipsch is a lively sound, and I like that. But I can also say that there are certain BMW designs that I could live with long term just as easily, and I know for a fact that those aren't bright, lively speakers. And so, even within our own biases, we have different tastes. And how much of that is then therefore like, well, I like B&W for these reasons. And so I have adopted uh, uh, an okayness, if you will, with their sound or their frequency response because there's other things about the brand that I like. The problem is you're not listening to a freaking graph no. on your wall or on your computer screen. 
you're taking these speakers home, you're pulling them out of the box, and you're setting them up. Maybe wrong. Yeah, that's <laughs> Who true. Who knows? Um, and and based on your environment and your hearing and all these other things we've already talked about, that's all going to impact what what you what you think you're hearing. Yeah. So. And it I doesn't mean, even take into effect, into account one other variable I realized I didn't even touch upon in this video. What's that? Your source material. The actual music you're listening to. And how that was mixed. Was that mixed bass heavy? Was that mixed by someone that already likes a smile curve in their own mix? If they put a smile curve in their own mix and you go to a smile curve speaker, you're deepening that response curve. It's like two scoops of vanilla when you wanted one of each, you know? Mm -hmm. And it just, you get, you can go mad. You can drive yourself insane. Yeah. I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, like I just have other things that I would rather do with right. my life right. and time. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't spend any time looking at the specs. We get something new in the house. You unbox it, you set it up, you turn it on, I pick the music I want to listen to, mm -hmm. or if I'm in the other room, it pulls me in because of the way it sounds. And really, at the end of the day, that's all you can ask. And just be confident that if you like it, you like it. That's, that's, the, that, that's it. That's everything right there is just be confident in your choice. Yeah. Like, but I know it's hard, especially in this, um, in the environment in which we work, you know, the, you know, it's easy to be influenced mm -hmm. by a lot of different people. There's a lot of different voices yeah. and a lot of different opin opinions out there. And then if you spend even five seconds in the comments anywhere, yeah, you can be easily led to believe that a, you don't know Jack, Mm -hmm. That whatever you bought, A, didn't cost enough, can't possibly sound any good, you know, it's the wrong brand. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's... Or worse, some I, I've heard it and I'm telling you, you didn't hear what I heard. Yeah. I'm right, you're wrong, you can't, you yeah. don't know what you're talking or, about. Or, you know, that one time in 1974, I heard this one thing, you know, that was $40,000 and nothing beats that. Well... Yeah, well, it probably wouldn't sound the same to you now anyway because, you know, 30, 40 years have passed and you don't have the same hearing. Yeah. But, again, I just want... I, I really hope that, if nothing else, when people hear what I have to say, because I know I don't have the same background as you, um, but I hope that at least you can maybe feel okay with with your decision about something like yeah. just be, you know, like if I like it, I like it. If I don't like it, then that's okay too. Yeah. There, I don't have anything to prove to anybody, but I can't wait to hear what everybody else has to say. Oh, I think the comments are going to be interesting. It's going to be, it's going to, I hope it, I, I, I don't want it to, de, to devolve or what's the word devolve, devolve. or devolve into, you know, bickering. I think this can be a good conversation starter. Oh, I want yeah. it to be a good conversation yeah, I, I starter. Yeah, I am. I am interested to yeah. know what our viewers, you know, like what camp do you guys fall in? Mm -hmm. But I really want you to explain why you feel the way you do, yeah. without having to prove that you're right. Yeah, I mean, just state your case. State your case. If people agree with you, then they agree with you, and if they don't, that's that's fine too. This is. The beautiful thing about specs, because, I mean, they, they can matter, but there's variance and there's this and that. There's room. There's room to believe in them. There's room to not believe in them, because ultimately, at the end of the day, you're the only person that has to either be validated by them or ignore them, you know? And as long as you like what you like, who, who, who really cares? But it's, it's a fun discussion. So is that it, you think? We yeah. good? Yeah, I think we're done. All right. That's today's video. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. 
If you use any of the links that Christy has left for you on this video or any of the videos that we have created, know that that's a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And we both thank you very much. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File. And like I've said earlier in this video, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.